The world fears a super eruption at Yellowstone, but the thousands of earthquakes and the breathing of the ground tell a different story. Here's what the data reveals is the real and most likely threat. Beneath the stunning geysers and vibrant hot springs of Yellowstone National Park, a monster sleeps. It's a volcano of almost unimaginable power, a caldera system so vast it's often called a supervolcano. For decades, this geological giant has been the subject of disaster movies and breathless documentaries, painting a picture of a ticking time bomb that could plunge the world into a new dark age. The narrative is terrifyingly simple. A cataclysmic eruption is overdue, and it could happen at any moment. But that story, the one that fuels our fear, is not the story the data tells. The real story of Yellowstone is being written every second of every day, not in sensational headlines, but in the quiet, meticulous language of science. It's a story told by a network of silent seismometers, high-precision GPS units, and sophisticated gas sensors, all managed by the scientists of the United States Geological Survey's Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, or YVO. Their mission is not to predict a specific date for an eruption, but to read the planet's pulse, to understand its rhythms, and to provide a clear, data-driven assessment of the real hazards. The stakes couldn't be higher. To separate fact from fiction, to replace baseless anxiety with an informed respect for one of Earth's most powerful forces, and to understand what really is the most likely threat to emerge from the ground. To begin, we have to understand the term that creates so much fear, supervolcano. It's not a strictly scientific term you'd find in a geology textbook, but it has been adopted to describe a volcano capable of an eruption of magnitude 8 on the Volcano Explosivity Index, or VEI. The VEI is a logarithmic scale, like the Richter scale for earthquakes, meaning each whole number represents a tenfold increase in eruptive power. A VEI-8 eruption is the largest ever recorded, an event that ejects over 1,000 cubic kilometers of material enough to bury the entire state of Texas five feet deep. This is the kind of event that can alter global climate for years. Feel the ground shudder, not from a simple earthquake, but from the deep, resonant roar of the earth itself, tearing open. The air, thick with the smell of sulfur, instantly chills as a column of ash and rock is blasted 30 miles into the stratosphere, punching a hole through the sky and blotting out the Sunday. Now, how do we know Yellowstone is capable of such an event? Because it has done it before. The evidence is written in the very landscape of North America. About 2.1 million years ago, the first known caldera forming eruption created a feature known as the Huckleberry Ridge Tuff. The sheer scale is difficult to comprehend. It was one of the largest volcanic eruptions known to science, thousands of times more powerful than the 1980 eruption of Mount Street Helens. Then, about 1.3 million years ago, a smaller, though still enormous, eruption formed the Mesa Falls Tuff. Finally, around 631,000 years ago, the last super eruption created the caldera we see today, laying down the vast blanket of volcanic rock known as the Lava Creek Tuff. These aren't just dates in a textbook. They represent moments when the North American continent was fundamentally reshaped by fire.
But how can geologists know the precise story of these ancient cataclysms? And what does this fiery past truly tell us about our future? The answer lies in the patient work of reading the Earth's diary, which is written in layers of rock. Geologists can trace the ash from these eruptions across the entire continent. The Lava Creek Tuff, for instance, has been identified as far away as Mississippi and the Gulf of Mexico. By mapping these deposits, they can calculate the volume of the eruption and understand its immense reach. Beneath the park today lies the source of this power, a colossal two-tiered magma reservoir. It's not a giant cavern of sloshing lava as often depicted. Instead, it's a sponge-like body of hot, crystalline mush with pockets of molten rock. The upper chamber, the one that would fuel an eruption, is estimated to be about 5 to 15 kilometers deep and is absolutely massive. Scientists map this hidden system not by drilling, but by using the, the Earth's own energy. Signature. A technique called seismic tomography works like a CT scan or an MRI of the planet's interior. By measuring how earthquake waves from both local tremors and distant quakes around the world slow down as they pass through hot, partially molten rock, scientists can build a three-dimensional image of the magma chamber. Imagine the low, almost imperceptible hum of the planet itself. The very vibrations that scientists harness to see into the deep earth painting a picture of a sleeping giant miles beneath our feet. This enormous reservoir of magma is what gives Yellowstone its famous features, the geysers, the hot springs, the bubbling mud pots. It's the engine of the park. But having a massive magma chamber doesn't mean an eruption is imminent. For an eruption to occur, that magma mush needs to become eruptible. This requires a new injection of hot, runny magma from deeper in the earth to mobilize the thick, sticky, rhyolitic magma in the upper chamber. It's this potential movement that the YVO is watching for with its sophisticated network of monitoring instruments, looking for three crucial warning signs. What are the subtle, almost invisible signals from deep within the earth that would be our only true warning that the monster was beginning to stir. The first and most talked about sign is seismicity. Yellowstone is one of the most seismically active areas in the United States, experiencing between 1,000 and 3,000 earthquakes every single year. The vast majority of these are too small for a person to even feel. These tremors are a normal part of the volcanic system's plumbing, caused by the movement of hot water and gases through the fractured rock of the Earth's crust. They are the creaks and groans of a healthy, active volcano. The YVO's network of seismometers can detect even the slightest tremor, allowing scientists to pinpoint its location and depth. They often occur in what are called earthquake swarms, where hundreds of small quakes happen in the same area over days or weeks. While these swarms often generate alarming headlines, they are usually just the result of shifting stress on pre-existing faults and are not caused by moving magma. A swarm that would genuinely concern scientists would look very different. They would look for a pattern of earthquakes that are progressively getting shallower indicating that magma was physically breaking rock as it moved towards the surface. This is a very specific and unambiguous signal. Hear the faint, rhythmic ticking of a seismograph in a quiet monitoring station. Each tiny jump of the needle, a whisper from the crust. It's a constant conversation, and scientists are listening for the moment the whisper turns into a shout. The second critical warning sign is ground deformation. As magma or pressurized gases move beneath the surface, they can cause the ground above 
to swell up or sink down. The Yellowstone caldera is in a constant, slow state of motion. It breathes. For years, the ground will rise, a process called uplift, as the system slowly recharges. Then it will enter a period of subsidence, where it falls again. This movement is incredibly slow, often just a few centimeters per year. To track this, the YVO uses an array of high-precision GPS stations that can detect changes in elevation smaller than the thickness of a dime. They also use a satellite-based technique called INSAR, or Interferometric Synthetic Aperture Radar, which can create detailed maps of ground movement over the entire park. This allows them to see the exact pattern of the caldera's breathing. An alarming signal would not be the slow, steady rise they currently observe. It would be a rapid and dramatic uplift in a specific location, many times faster than any previously recorded rate, indicating that a significant volume of magma was accumulating at a shallow depth. Picture a vast, silent landscape of pine and rock, under which a force is pushing the very ground upward slower than a fingernail grows, but with a power that is measured by satellites in orbit. But even with rising we ground have and swarms of event. earthquakes, there is one final, crucial piece of evidence scientists need before they we would have ever declare a, a volcanic emergency. That third, and perhaps most direct, piece of the puzzle comes from the gases and heat that are constantly escaping from Yellowstone's thermal features. The park is home to over 10,000 geysers, hot springs, and fumaroles, which act as natural vents for the volcanic system. Scientists at the YVO regularly sample these gases and use permanent sensors to monitor their composition. They are looking for subtle changes. Did Most of the gas released is harmless water shift, vapor and carbon dioxide. Cycles. However, an increase Did in the amount of sulfur dioxide, Just a, a gas shift, that smells like a struck match, cycles. would be a major red flag. Did you get a good sulfur dioxide dissolves easily in water, so for it to reach the surface, it has to be carried by magma that is rising too quickly for the gas to be scrubbed out by the hydrothermal system. A significant spike in sulfur dioxide emissions, combined with rapid ground deformation and migrating earthquakes, would be the trifecta of evidence suggesting an eruption could be on its way. Inhale the sharp, acrid scent of sulfur near a steaming fumarole. To a tourist, it's a curious smell. To a geologist, it is a direct message from the deep earth, a chemical postcard from the magma below. So, after decades of meticulous 24 7 monitoring, what is the official data-driven verdict from the USGS? The probability the of a large caldera forming eruption in any in given year is about 1 in 730,000. The These are odds far lower than the chance of a catastrophic asteroid impact. The data shows that the magma reservoir is mostly solid and that there are no signs of an impending super eruption. So, what is the real threat? The most likely type of eruption at Yellowstone is not a VEI-8 catastrophe. It's either a hydrothermal explosion or a lava flow. A hydrothermal explosion is a steam-powered blast that occurs when superheated water flashes to steam in the shallow subsurface. These can be violent, throwing boulders for miles and creating craters hundreds of feet across. They happen much more frequently than volcanic eruptions with at least one occurring every few hundred years. The next most likely event is an effusive lava flow, where thick, rhyolitic lava oozes out onto the surface. The last one occurred about 70,000 years ago. While it would be a major event within the park, 
destroying everything in its path, it would not have the global climatic consequences of a super eruption. These are the real, statistically probable hazards, dangerous on a local scale, but not civilization ending. The story of Yellowstone, when viewed through the lens of science, is not about an impending apocalypse. It's about a dynamic and living planet. The constant monitoring by the USGS allows us to appreciate its power without succumbing to irrational fear. It's a testament to human ingenuity, our ability to use technology to understand and live with the immense forces that shape our world. The data tells us to be respectful, to be prepared, but not to be afraid. The monster is sleeping, and the scientists who watch over it see no signs that it's about to wake up. The true risk at Yellowstone isn't the, the eruption is that is statistically unlikely no to happen in our lifetimes, up. but the rampant misinformation that obscures the incredible work of the scientists who are dedicated to understanding the truth. If you find stories that prioritize data over drama compelling, consider following for more deep science that uncovers the facts behind the phenomena that shape our world.